Hello everybody, my name is Orchlan and today I'm gonna be doing a tutorial on how to speedrun this game, specifically Leon A. I'll be doing it for PC 120 FPS on standard for now. In the future, I probably will do tutorials for the other categories. There's generally eight uh, with all four scenarios and two difficulties. But for now, I'm gonna be covering what what's um, necessary for Leon A standard 120 FPS on PC. Uh, first off, I highly recommend playing the game casually at least once before attempting to speed on it. I don't recommend learning the speed run without ever playing the game. And also, this... While this is a very well-optimized game, uh, to run 120 FPS, you still need decently capable hardware, which you might not have. So just keep that in mind. But anything relatively mid-range should work, work fine. Now, if you're having performance problems, I suggest going to audio, lowering dynamic range to small, and real-time binaur binaural to off. I have heard that these lower CPU usage, and also for graphic settings, uh, run the game at your desired resolution, and if you would like if you would like to run at a lower resolution, try turn turning down image quality first and still keeping the resolution at your monitor's native native size. If you're running in full screen or if you're running in window, the size of the window that you want. Image quality just makes the game render at a lower resolution than is actual, and it does save a lot of performance at the cost of much less graphical quality. Now, the settings that cause the most performance loss is volumetric lighting, shadow quality, and I believe those are the two most intensive graphical settings. Of course, the image quality is, uh, takes precedence, but it just modifies how, what resolution the game is rendering at. What I recommend is... Uh, having anti-aliasing off because there's no good anti-aliasing options in this game. Texture quality should be generally set as high as you want. Depends on how much video memory you have available. Generally, if you, the, the graphics memory usage in the settings is more of a guideline. Doesn't seem to be accurate at all. I have an 8GB GPU and it's still running completely fine. Like this. And texture filtering quality, generally you can set set it to max. Mesh quality, you can set it to max. Shadow quality, I recommend setting it to high instead of max. Unless you have a really good GPU. And shadow cache and context shadows definitely need to be on. Shadow cache actually improves performance. By caching these shadows instead of calculating it all the time. Now context shadows just makes the game look a little bit better. Screen space reflections, though, all these settings, they don't take that much performance, but make the game look a little bit better. And then, so they're all up to you, your, either your personal preference or hardware demands. But in general, if you're having problems, I recommend turning down shadow quality and volumetric lighting first. And then, and after that, mess around with these settings, and then if the, that doesn't work, just lower the resolution as much as you can afford to, and still... I have the game not look like look really bad. Now you're allowed to turn down the graphics settings for bosses, which is where you need a consistent 120 FPS to not lose time because that's why we run at 120 FPS. The knife in this game hits it's more depending on how much frames you have. The reason why 120 was settled on 
as the frame rate to run the game at was because it was higher than 60 which a lot of people wanted while still not going completely crazy and ha requiring an insanely good PC. Now that should cover the performance portion. Now if... Uh, for context, I used to run this game at like 80% image quality at 1080p with all graphics set to nearly minimum on a GTX 970 which is a GPU from 2014, I believe. And my at, at the time my CPU was not was a non KI 74770 running at 3.4 gigahertz. So anything decently mid range, a third gen, second gen, or even first gen Ryzen, six core Ryzen, or an i5 8400 should run the game relatively fine. A decently clocked four core CPU should uh, handle it per perfectly fine. At like 6600K, 6776 or 7700K. Now, okay, that covers the performance tuning portion of the tutorial. Now, let's move on to the actual game. Before I start the actual actual route, there's, I want to cover a few things about the game's movement and mechanics. So, first off, the movement in this game is just basically a normal third person uh, style uh, gameplay. There are some quirks to it that actually I'm not a big fan of first of all let's say you're running and you can see how as Leon approaches the wall he starts slowing down well before he actually touches the wall and then when he actually does touch the wall he stops moving now this is really annoying in that the game will sometimes slow you down and when you're not actually approaching a wall like, you're, if you're running close to a wall and you turn over to aggressively, even though you would have passed the wall anyway, like over here. It's not really consistent, but it just so slows you down and makes uh, Leon or Claire, but since I'm doing Leon, I'll refer to him as Leon, makes Leon do weird movements that you generally do not predict or want it to happen. Sometimes Leon will grind walls all day and keep running anyway. Sometimes even the slightest hint of obstacles will uh, make Leon slow down. So be mindful of that. Now, turning. Generally, I recommend using the mouse for turning all the time. I will cover quick turning, but for now, when it just comes to general turning, let's say you're just running around and there's like not much, you don't want to turn aggressively, I just recommend using the mouse to turn. Now if you're, let's say you're running and then you press D or A, it does turn Leon with the keyboard, so you, I'm not touching, moving the mouse at all, yet I'm turning Leon. But what, the problem with this is, if you're running at full speed and then you press right, okay, Leon turns right, good, perfect. But if you're walking and then you're per okay, walking is the same thing. Okay, if you're not moving or if you're slowing down and then you press right, it can sometimes make Leon do make Leon do aggress more aggressive turns instead of softer turns, and then it can accidentally make you run into walls that you do not want. I believe I can show it off here. Yeah, here. So, while I was approaching uh, the turn, I pressed D. Now, if I... Okay, if I press it late, I guess it's fine. But let's see, if I press it a little bit too early, even though Leon would not have made the turn anyway, like, even if Leon would not have made the turn, turning normally, it would slow down. Okay, I swear this is not consistent. Yeah, like... Leon slowed down even though he should have grinded the wall and then made the corner easily. So like Leon, sometimes it works, sometimes the game's slowdown mechanic kicks in. And it's generally not predictable and I recommend staying away from it as far as possible. 
kind of hard to make it happen for an example, but it, as soon as you start playing the game and you start messing around with the with the fine uh, with fine to uh, tuning your movement, you'll you'll start noticing it easily. Now, okay, quick turns. Now, there's a general debate on whether or not quick turns are actually faster or not. Quick turning is essentially instead of turning smoothly like this with your mouse for more sharper turns a lot of people like to do uh, quick turns uh, let's find a 90 degree angle so where it's a little bit more demonstrable let's go back here and let's get rid of the zombie because oh wait it's already gone. okay so if you're not quick turning you might do run like this. Generally you want to keep your lines as tight as possible so you're fastest. But other often other times often you might want to do a quick turn. So like this. What a quick turn is you basically instead of smoothly turning you want Leon to stop, turn and then start moving again. This is very fast. And it's generally thought to save time. But, however, I'm not convinced. I still do it, but I'm not entirely convinced. What it does do, however, is it enforces a consistent line. Like, if you do do a manual turn, you're go always going to be off of the wall, so your line is never going to be as tight as you ideally want it to be. You're either going to not turn as tight, causing you to do a wide line, or you're gonna turn too much and then end up grinding the wall that you were trying to you're just trying to stay as close as possible which in the end is gonna lose you minuscule amounts of time whether or not it's worth it or not depends on the particular room obstacle and your execution so experiment with it um i have certain things i like to do for certain rooms sometimes i like quick turning sometimes i like just manually turning Okay, now how to actually do quick turns? There's two methods. Uh, there's the uh, normal quick turns and there's the aim quick turns. The normal quick turn, which is generally not used as much anymore because it's definitely slower, is you let go forward. Let's say you're running, you let go forward and then you press a directional button. Very simple. You never get rid of, you never stop holding the run button while you're doing it. So you run forward, you just let go of W and then Press right, left, whichever way you want a quick turn. You wanna press press the direction you want a quick turn as fast as possible, but only after letting go of uh, the direction you're running right now. The other way is aim quick turn, which actually can be done in two different ways. So it's in reality there's three different ways of quick turning. There is a uh, aim quick turn in which, let's say you're running forward and then you wanna quick turn right. You would run, you would aim and then you would press right. Aim, press left, aim, press right, or aim, press forward. If your cam camera is set up like this and you wanna quick turn that, that way, the wheel is left, let the camera's forward. This is generally accepted, accepted to be much faster because. What aiming does is it serves as a quick stop for your character. Your character's speed comes to almost a grinding halt when you aim. Whereas if you let Leon naturally slow down, there's always going to be some sort of some sort of inaccuracy with the movement. And this is what most of the top runners like to do, and it's generally very controllable. Like, if you actually manage to get a, get an aim off, no matter which way you turn, it's actually gonna execute a quick turn. Whereas with aim, uh, whereas with regular quick turning, sometimes it might not come out. It's uh, kind of hard to control. Now, the second way of aim quick turning is, say you're running forward, and instead of aim to aim and then press right, quick turn right, you preemptively look right, and then you aim into it. Now this is slightly harder to control because for one thing, let's say there was a wall to Leon's right 
you can't exactly start aiming right without having Leon slow down to the wall slow down mechanics. So what you do is you hold up left. Okay, let's go to an actual wall where it's slightly easier to demonstrate. Okay, let's uh, get over to the next wall, which is actually a 90 degree turn. So for this uh, wall, you could do aim, right turn like that, that's a good turn. Uh, this song is gonna be... Gonna be in the way. Okay, let's just get rid of her. So, like, like, like I've done, I can do an aim turn right, which makes you do a very tight line. And you want tight lines, or you can just manually turn. And it's not really that much different if you actually notice, and I... Honest to god, I haven't noticed any speed differences between the two. Now this, that was slightly wide. So you can see how it's, it can be slightly harder to optimize your lines with normal turning, especially for 90 degree corners. Uh, versus uh, quick turning. And this is actually easier and more consistent. So if it doesn't save time, it, it nobody can actually prove it saves time, but it definitely doesn't lose time either. So I recommend doing aim turns uh, as much as possible, where it actually causes you to take a tighter line. Taking a longer line just so you can execute in the aim turn, a quick turn. In general, I do not recommend. Some people do it. I don't think it's worth it. I think in those cases, you're just better off doing manual turns. Now, the a aim into turning, the way you do is, let's say, it's like this. It feels slightly slower. I'm not sure if it is slower. But, okay, let's say you're running uh, forward. Before you actually get there, you... Instead of just holding up, you can press up left, tilt your camera like this. Leon will still be running in a straight line, but just looking over there slightly. Okay, let's switch from slightly further away. And as soon as the corner opens up, you aim into it. Now this... This definitely is useful in cases where you need to actually look in, look. into where you're quick turning when there could be enemies over there. Now this place is actually a perfect example because the first time you pass through uh, there's no uh, green vest fat zombie here. Yellow vest uh, fat zombie. Whereas the second time he can be around over here. Now so for the first pass you can actually do this and then be on your merry way. For the second pass you can Still do this, but if you have bad RNG, you can get caught by the zombie before you even actually can even see him. So for the second bass, you can do this, and actually, instead of just aim turning into it, you can, if you see, see him, do this, aim, shoot him, and then run forward, essentially doing aiming once for two purposes. Now it's all very case specific. Depending on what part of the run it is. So, like, I definitely recommend just experiment with it. Uh, do what feels most comfortable where you feel like you can be the fastest. I am gonna be uh, explaining what I do for each specific part of the run. After I've covered all the general concepts I wanna cover now. So, that's quick turns and aim turns, which. Kind of complicated. Now, stair skating. Now, stair skating is relatively simple. Running upstairs, uh, your character has special animations for running up and down stairs that's actually slower than your running animation, definitely. Especially when you're running downwards. You can see how slow that is. Now, this isn't that slow, but it's still slower. Now, stair skating is essentially aiming while on stairs to stumble fast stumble through faster now you can see this when you're running on flat ground you aim after you come out of the aim leon stumbles 
before he regains his form. Now what this uh, does means is running obviously is the fastest way to run in a straight line. You aim and stumble that's slightly slower but roll is still relatively fast and running on stairs that's uh, that is slower than aim stumbling. So what you're essentially doing is you're replacing these uh, slow stairs running animations with stumbling animations which end up saving you a rather large amount of time. Now with Leon, stair skating is actually rather simple. It doesn't ma matter what angle you're facing, or... It's easier than Claire. So what you just want to do is... You, you aim... Okay. For example... You aim and then see how Leon transitions over, over to the stair running animation. You want to aim and before Leon transitions over to that slower animation, you want to aim again. But do it as less often as possible. Basically, the least amount of uh, aims, well, the least amount of aim aiming actions while uh, stumbling as much as possible. So you don't ever want to transition over to the slower stair running animation. And I generally do it by feeling I don't have like a set rhythm or uh, do this many staircases, this many uh, per like point. I don't know, 0.8 seconds or 0.7 seconds. I'm sure you can calculate that, but I just uh, do it by feeling. So this is like generally the pace I stair skate for on Leon. Now, depending on whether or not whether or not Leon has his flashlight out, stair skating does change. Uh, in general, I believe that when Leon has his flashlight out, you can stair skate slower and get away with it. If you stair skate faster, it can still be faster than not stair skating, but I, uh, not, I believe it's slower than uh, perfect stair skating. So you can do something like this, which is definitely faster than just running. Uh, just running, but uh, just try doing it as slow as possible, and don't let Leon transition over to a slow running animation. Now that's basically uh, what stair skating uh, is. Now, the hard part comes when you have stairs and you have zombies to deal with. So basically, sometimes you need to shoot a zombie while you're stair skating. Well, not sometimes, it's just only one area of the game. And so, like, if you take long to aim and shoot at the zombie, that's a stair skate. So you don't need to press aim as soon as after you shoot a zombie because you're already pressing game. So shoot a zombie, stair skate, and then stair skate. Now this is a re relatively minor optimization, but something to keep in mind. Now one other thing. Uh, when you aim, uh, this uh, involves quick turn. When you aim, and Leon's stumble animation, when Leon's in that stumble animation, he won't turn. So you can see how, okay, if I turn my mouse to the right really fast, Leon will start turning rather immediately. He's still still kind of slow, but he will in generally start turning as fast as possible and his turn speed will catch up eventually. Now, if you aim and Leon's stumbling, you can see how there's a delay in which Leon actually starts turning. Now, that was, No, okay, that, that was bad. Okay, so, like, uh, I'm talking about aiming forward, but you want to go over there. You aim, try to turn, and there's a big delay on whether or not Leon... Uh, big, big delay on when Leon actually starts turning. Now, in this instance, quick turning uh, is definitely faster. And you generally want to do aim, turn, aim into turns when this happens. So like, you shoot, you shoot a zombie, but you want to do it to a turn. Okay, let's say I get to a corner, but it's like easier to demonstrate. Let's say there was a zombie like, right around over here, and that you need to shoot him because he's gonna grab you if you try to uh, duck down inside. So, you shoot him, and then, you, okay. 
you shoot him and then you try to turn white, you see how wide of a line uh, Leon took there. That's really wide. So if you do that, shoot and... Okay, it's kind of... Uh, I messed up that time. You shoot and then you aim turn again. Makes That definitely makes Leon take a tighter, tighter line. Now this is actually very important for getting good gas station times. As I'll demonstrate demonstrate when I actually started start the route section of the tutorial. Oh yeah, that aim turning is uh, very important for stair skates. Because okay, so let's say you're stair skating, and you just happen it just happens that the last stair skate you do is near the end of the stairs. So you still a stair skate, and then but you want to turn right of the stairs. Okay, a stair skate at the end, and then you want to turn right. You see how wide of a line Leon takes, and that that'll happen if uh, your stair skate just happens to be at the end. Your last stair skate happens to be at the end of the stairs. Now this can uh, be fixed uh, by just aim turning. Now that is much faster, much faster than uh, just doing a manual turn. Now this is where uh, the debate on whether or not quick turns save time or not happens, happens mostly because a lot of people test it on stairs, spe uh, specifically the stairs of the zombies near this uh, near the other section of the RPD where it definitely does save time. However, if you're Last stair skate happens to be like a perfect, perfectly timed stair skate where it's like your stumble it ends exactly when you need to turn. Now if you do it and then you do manually turn, it's not gonna be that much slower. And it's probably gonna be the same speed, but that's very hard to time. So it's just simpler to do a, an aim turn when stairs end, or you can do you can do it like this. It doesn't matter. Now that should cover the movement, most of the movement that you need to do in this game. At least the basic concepts now. Let's move on to inventory before we start the route. Now to explain the inventory... Let's get rid of these items. Why I had them, I don't know. So what you need to keep in mind is the handgun starts over here and Generally, the second uh, by the time we're in the RPD, the second slot's the gas station key. It's not care about it. Okay, whatever. So when you pick up an item, it fills up your inventory in these orders, which is obvious, right? Generally, uh, the way how this game's inventory works is no matter where your cursor is, you exit the and re-enter the inventory, your cursor is reset. Like your mouse cursor is to the left of the first slot. Like you can move it anywhere you want, exit the inventory, return, and it's over there. Which is a good thing for consistency. And your keyboard cursor, or the cursor that actually selects what item you're gonna interact with in the inventory, is always reset to the first uh, item position. This is not like RE7 where you could preemptively set your cursor to an item that you wanted to use. Which um, meant you didn't need to optimize your inventory as much. And there was a lot of dead time in RE7 where you can actually just fix your inventory because when you open the inventory, the game still kept running. Whereas here, the game pauses when you open up your inventory, so you no matter what, you have to do all your menuing and inventory as fast as possible. Now, okay, when you want to use an item, generally the first slot is the best slot because what you can do is you just mash use as fast as possible and if you have the item that you want to use already prepped there, it's going to use it nearly instantly or at least as fast as humanly possible. So let's say I had a spade key over here and I wanted to open this, I can just smash mash the use button as much as possible and the first click opens it. The second click uh, opens the interaction menu, and then the third click clicks use. So basically, mash use use three times, or just as many as times as one as fast as you can, and that's the fastest. 
So the first inventory slot is your most valued inventory slot. Now, these three slots are um, nearly as fast. So watch, okay, if the spade key is in this slot, which uh, in my inventory route it is, but if you wanted to use it, you can do F, D, F is the use key, so F, D, F, F, which you can do really fast, because it's only one directional input, and it's generally not that different from the first slot. Or if you wanted to go down, it's F, S, F, F, and it's really fast, and even this slot, it's also really fast because you can input SD at the same time. And you can use an item really fast. Now, the other slots. Okay, let me load up a save file that has more uh, inventory slots, of, slots obtained. This should be good. So yeah. Uh, generally, uh, this is the max inventory slots you're gonna get in the standard one. If you take the an extra pouch which only costs 3 seconds, we'll get to that later. So these 4 slots, okay let's move this away. These 4 slots are still gonna be your most valuable slots. So every time you wanna use an item that's not in these 4 slots, it's gonna be slower because you have to either do let, let's say there's an item over here that you want to use you have to do two directional inputs before you can ma start matching use which is slower if it's over here it's three directional inputs or rather two if you go right and then right down at the same time or this this is two down inputs now this might sound a really minuscule but just one input you can do really fast but two inputs Having to press the but one the same button twice with the same finger loses a lot of time versus pressing two different buttons with two separate fingers. So like, if you wanted to use an item that's over here, it's you can do it really fast. You just press F S F F with uh, two different fingers. But it, if you want to do this, you press F to open the usage prompt for a particular uh, item. But then you have to press S twice. Uh, twice with uh, with one of your fingers and that was really slow now the, there's a, the second way of manual which I personally personally try to stay as far away as from as possible because I'm not good at it is mouse manuing if you're actually good at mouse manuing your inventory can uh, be relatively unoptimized and uh, you can still not lose time so if you're really good at mouse movement, let's say you had a key item that you wanted to use way over here, like maybe the single module is over here, you can mouse over to it instantly and then and then just press use twice with the mouse key or the use key. I'm not good at it, but if you are, you're welcome to use it. But I just try to optimize my inventory as much as possible. Uh, well, I'm trying to lose as much time so I can I can save time on faster usage down the line. Now with mouse usage, one big problem is if your an item is over here, you're flicking to it, you click a little bit too early, and then you accidentally you click again. So see how this examine prompt comes up over this item? You're flicking it, and then you. Click a little bit too early and then click again a little bit too early. You can open an examine menu, which costs a lot of time. This happens quite often. Ah, uh, when in terms of mass menuing. Okay, now other than that, there's you can also drag items to the mouse, which is actually pretty fast. If you wanted to move things around, this is actually very useful. You just hold, drag. It where you want, let it go, and it's gonna swap items. Or I don't think it pushes items. It, I think it generally just swaps items. Now you can do it with the mouse, or you can do it with the Alt key, or which, whatever key you want. Uh, bind it to. You can do that. You press Alt. Now you can see it's red. It, the game wants you to move it. You move it where you want it to move, and then you press Alt again, and and items moved. Now this I do only once in the run. 
I still try to use alt and do the uh, inventorying with the keyboard because that's what I prefer. If you want to, if you feel like you can do it uh, really fast with the mouse, you can. The mouse, I believe, is ultimately faster in that case, but we'll get to it later. Attention. Okay, so one more thing I want to cover is so these four slots are your most valuable slots. Uh, we covered that, right? So how do you use them most efficiently? Well, the game fills up your inventory with these from top left to right and then fills it up in a row. Now what you need to keep in mind about that is you want to fill up these two slots with items that you do not want to use as fast as possible. So. If these two slots are filled, the game is going to start, start filling this, this, and then this, and then this. So the first four slots, slots, slots that the game fills up with items are going to be the slots that you can use items in as fast as possible. So that's what I try to, like to do with... Try to set up my inventory as early as possible. For example here. Uh, this is your inventory after entering the RPD. When the gate's opening, what I like to do is discard this, and and while it's discarded, I like to move this over here. So you can see how I fill these two slots with. Okay, especially this one. This handgun is not gonna go away for the entire run. So it's gonna stay there for the entire run and you're never gonna need or want to strain near it anyway anyway. Now this knife's gonna go away, but that, that's fine. This this if you have to put put a key item in uh to use, this is better than this. Unless you do mouse menuing. So this I like to keep this inverse slot filled with with the handgun as early as possible and basically try to keep the slot filled with whatever it's whatever's in the raw sometimes ammo sometimes it's a knife that i'm going to keep for the entire run so when you have it like this and then let's say you pick up the spade key you pick the bolt cutters the fuse the, the fuse the valve handle they're all going to fill up this these four slots which you're gonna use and a lot of the items you'll pick up you'll put it over here uh, they get used, you can discard them to open them up for newer items. There are a few items in the game where that you cannot discard them after after you use them because uh, there are parts of the game parts of the game that they can be used at but not in the run, so the game is not gonna let you discard them. Uh, we'll get to it when when I actually start the route section of the tutorial, but that's one thing to keep in mind. So if you when you start prioritizing these four slots in between themselves you want to put put the most active most often used but also discardable item over here which in the entirety of RPD is the bolt cutters which is why even though we pick up the spade key first I like to put the spade key over here and then save the slot for the bolt cutters so the spade key lasts for the entire RPD whereas the bolt cutters last for like two minutes Use the bolt cutters three times, discard it, and you have another you have this slot open for something else like a medallion. Uh, okay, basically that's uh, that's just the con uh, concept. So I'm gonna go over my actual inventory around. See now, I think I've covered everything I need to preemptively cover. Oh, that took a long time. Didn't expect it to expect it to take long. Okay, so Leon is Kennedy standard. <laughs> Okay, one thing uh, to keep in mind is cutscene skips don't lose your time uh, in, in the in-game time. So you can take your time slowing them. Uh, take your time watching them if you want to, which you can completely do. Okay, I there's something else I forgot to cover, which I'll You're get to right. in the other pretty. Don't move. I'll be back for you. Now the lines I'm doing is just what a lot of a lot of the time they're Freeze! pretty simple. I'll just shoot! take the shortest shortest path between objectives. For example, pick up this 
warehouse key, shoot the zombie, and then I executed an aim, aim turn there. And over there, I do two, uh, two aim turns. Attention, all citizens. Due to the... This is out of control. Uh, basically, the uh, actual lines that want to take their uh, relative stage straightforward. They don't like anything special, specific about how what lines you want to take for the fastest possible results. They're just like, okay, take the straightest line you, you, you can take. Uh, these are just stair skates. There it is, the station. All right, if there's uh, anything specific that I need to explain, I will. Try to run to the left of the zombie with light space so it doesn't grab you. Now this, run through the front of the zombie at a specific distance and he doesn't notice it for some reason. That's a stair. And you want to go here. We'll open the shutter. Uh, go to Elliot. Uh, these are the things that you need to do to, do to progress the game. Uh, to push that up, you need to hold, hold the use button, not just press it once if it... Uh, let go, Leon's gonna drop the shelf, which is not gonna be good. Open up! Hurry! Open up! Open it! Now, when going over to to a use usage prompt, I like to mash the use button. You can't hold it; you have to like mash it. You can wait for the air. Uh, from when you're far away, you can see uh, the game indicate uh indi indicate a particular location by. Uh, by an icon saying hey you can interact with this and when you actually get close enough the game pops up the pops up your use button now you can wait until you see that to press it but I like to mash it so it's as fast as possible now on files your timer doesn't run so you can actually open these up which but uh, usually you press mouse to to dismiss it now this you want to run to this door as fast as possible because a zombie is going to bang it. If the zombie comes bursting through the door faster, if you're the closer you are to the door. So you want to get as close to it as possible. And for some reason, if you pause here, the zombie does one less bang. So you pause for uh, about a couple seconds. The zombie is going to burst through immediately. Okay, that was embarrassing. I stood too close and he knocked me, but it's based, that's just what I want to do. Now over here you want to run straight, then only turn right, and then back to left, and the zombies want to aggro. That's a stairs gate, and you want to get back out here. Does anyone know what started this? Uh, the Marvel's gonna give you a knife. I want the knife over there. Okay, let's go over a couple things that I totally uh, forgot. Ah. Uh, Speed boosts. This is not now, there's this thing in the game where, let's say you're standing still, you press the run button, and then you press forward, Leon stumbles before he runs. It's like almost the same animation as aiming. Now, this is slow. What's actually faster is, press the up button and then press the run button. So you'll walk, walk, for like the briefest of frames, and then you'll start running, but you skip the stumble animation and this actually saves you time this can easily ver be verified to save you time you want to turn right okay press right and then press the wrong button left press the wrong button now this is faster okay turning left and right might not be the same but generally it's it's faster to start moving before you for like the briefest frame before you press the run button. Actually, running left and right does it is still a bit speedless. Might be hard to see, but trust me, it is. Okay, so also turning behind. Now there's a button in the game uh, for a 180 degree turn. 
Don't use it. In fact, unbind it so you don't accidentally press it. That's super slow. The camera turns manually, and after the camera finishes turning, the game turns Leon. Instead, the fastest way to quick turn is aim, turn back. Now, this is exactly like quick turning left or right uh, in a 90 degree angle. You just aim and then press behind, or you can actually aim backwards like that. Now, that's much faster than regular quick turning. So, say you're running this and then you press S, that's slower. Slower than aim turning. Or if you're running with the camera angle like this and then you press forward, that's slower than aim quick turning. Okay, I think that was what I missed. Okay, let's go. So, while the shutter is opening, what I like to do is I like to discard this item and then move the handgun over here. Which I've uh, I said I like to have these two slots covered with non-essential items. Non-essential as in you don't need to manually use them. For now, I won't pick up any ammo, but I uh, will uh, cover that later. I like to do just manual turns here. Now here, this turn, I like to do keyboard t left turn. Because next time you go around there, there's a zombie over there, which I'll explain later. Now for turns that are generally not 90 degrees or with obstacles that are clearly does not provide a 90 degree uh, turn option, it's just easier to turn manually. But And over here I like to do just manual turns because for some reason I find turning left a little bit easier. It's just personal preference, you, you can do whatever you want. Now in standards, zombies are stunned by one headshot, almost guaranteed. Also, okay, when it comes to item pickups, there's one thing to keep in mind. Okay, this is a spade key. I've never seen a spade key before in this playthrough. So when I press use, the game gives me, introduces the item to me, essentially. So this is like one extra prompt. So you press the use button, and now the game asks me where to place it. But if it's an item that I, I have seen before, uh, like a knife, or the second time I'll try to pick up a uh, flash, grenade, or if I say no to picking up this item and then I try to pick it up again, the introduction screen never comes up. Now, the thing was... You can use the introduction screen to mouse items into specific inventory slots without losing as much time. So, for example, let's say I wanted to put this item like over here, and I wanted to mouse over it. I would... I would open it up and then move my mouse over, which is gonna lose me time. But if I, uh, on the first introduction screen, okay, let's get, let's get out of here. The route that we didn't want to take is go back down through the west office or the east office. One of the offices with this lock is fake. Right, we'll find another item that we haven't interacted with before. Okay, there's a gunpowder here. We don't pick up gunpowder, but this is a perfect example. Let's say, for some reason, I wanted to pick up this gunpowder and mouse it to a specific slot. Now, the you can see your inventory is not shown, but your mouse cursor is shown. So while you're dismissing this introduction screen, you can move your mouse over while dismissing it. And when the inventory opens, you can have your mouse already at a specific slot that you want to put it. This does require some accuracy uh, and your intuition on where your inventory slots are without actually seeing it. But if you can do it perfectly, you can put an item into a specific inventory slot without losing time, which can be very useful. Because otherwise, if you put an inventory slot, if you put an item into an inventory slot that you do not want to be wasted, that can cause problems down the line. Okay, so we're gonna say no to that. And this is the rod you wanna take on Leon, which is the fastest. Even though there's a cutscene trigger. Now we go this way. 
and open up... What is that room called? Okay, I'm not really well versed with what the rooms are called. This, yeah, this is the west office. This is the, uh, this is the east. This is the waiting room. Go through the waiting room. This is a uh, speed key usage. And you can see, like, because the speed key is in a really good slot, I can use it really fast. It would be faster if it was in the first slot, but I want to save that slot for the bulkers. Okay, so what I just did here, uh, what happens is, so the helicopter crashes, and depending on Leon's angle in relation to the helicopter, Leon's going to stumble backwards or forwards. What I did was, right before the helicopter crashed, I just turned my angle just enough that Leon stumbles forward. So I don't lose time forwards, just running forwards, and the helicopter crashed, Leon would have stumbled backwards, and that would have had a slightly longer distance to run. So what you want to do is just generally aim, uh, aim to the right sharply enough that your turn angle is changed, and then you stumble forward. This is a relatively minor, minor optimization, but still worth doing. Now here, you'll see why I was saving the stop. The bolt cutters here. is used quite often, Marvin, you copy? and in a very, very short Marvin. amount of time, so that's why I wanted to be in the first slot. Also, we're, we wait for Leon's radio call to end while mashing, and we don't exactly... Oh, we can't exactly tell that it, when it's gonna end with absolute accuracy, whereas if you, if you were just running towards uh, an item front and using it as soon as we got close, we wouldn't lose as much time. So it's just really beneficial to have the bolt cutters in the first slot. And we've already used the bolt cutters twice. Better valve handle. Okay, my game's stuttering a lot for some reason. Okay, so even though the uh, the, uh, the, what it called, fuse was over here, I was able to still use it really fast because this is still a very good answer. Okay, uh, let me just turn that graphics settings because it's actually lagging for some reason. Maybe because I'm recording, it's causing some lag. Okay. okay, let's turn it back down. Now you want to go back over here. Okay, uh, one thing to note is if uh, you're just starting out, I recommend picking up this ammo. This is just 6 ammo. Uh, you don't want to overload on ammo because it's gonna... You don't want to overload on ammo because it's, uh, having this tree ammo in your inventory can cause inventory problems. So, for example, you start with 9. Okay, you start with 10, you spend 1 in the gas station. Uh, so you like you don't want to pick that up. That's actually saved for later, but this is only six So you pick that up you spend three on the stairs Stairs zombies and you reload and you have a full clip, but no uh, straight ammo remaining So I recommend picking up that specific uh, ammo pack Now the second way through uh, that corpse that's hanging by the ceiling can actually drop if you get too close to it, so you need to run down the inside. Now over here, for this zombie, I like to turn left with the keyboard because it lets you stay farther away from the zombie so he doesn't actually aggro. If you're, if you're careless, with, I careless with it, he can actually grab you. Now we're over here. And we've, uh, we've already used up. We've already used up the bolt cutters, we can discard it now, but we're not gonna, because... A flashlight is not a key item that's gonna be manually used, so... While all four of these slots are populated, you wanna pick this up and it'll be put into a slot that you don't... That you want it to be spent on a, on a non-key item. Now, that zombie can be in the way sometimes, sometimes you have to shoot him. And the zombie that's over here, the first time you pass through, if you uh, drop down to the first floor, he can be also be in the way. They'll watch out for that.
Now we need to get to the... Okay, here. When you enter this room, you want to slow down just for the for a few brief second. Brief second. Uh, it messes. Uh, it causes some manipulations with the liquors that you that we want. Now this combining items. So the fastest way to do this. This is a battery. I already have detonator, and I want to combine them. Right. The fast way to do it with, while the introduction screen is coming up. I want to move the mouse to where the detonator is. Dismiss, and it's already mousing over it. Combine, and another prompt. It's gonna it's gonna land into this slot. Now this is very hard. You can uh, when you're combining items, you don't want to accidentally pick it up, pick it up without actually combining. You want to actually combine it. So what you want to keep in mind is okay. So my inventory was set up like this. The battery gets set over here. If you're not gonna mouse it over, the mouse is gonna. Be, if you're not gonna mouse it over, when you dismiss the introduction prompt, you can press right and then FF to combine with it. Okay, I'll, I'll try to explain it a little bit more when I get a different item to combine. So, essentially, so if this item slot was not populated, if your inventory was like like this, for example, the battery would have been uh, would have been initially placed here, and you would have had to move it over here. But if you have it like this, uh, the nearest em having the, a nearest empty slot be close to close to, to an item that needs to be combined can be very useful. Okay, I'll cover more when I get a different item that can be combined. Uh, that's it. No. Okay, that's weird. Okay, that is not acceptable. I s spent a little bit too long in the star's office and his position changed. Okay, load, load an autosave. Hopefully it's not too far away. Okay, good. So you want to slow down just a little bit in the doorway and pick this up, combine them, do an aim turn, and he should be on the ground, yeah that's good. Now he's gonna spend a little bit of time turning on the ground, that was perfect, and now he's, he has no chance of catching up to us. Just, just go on the way. Okay, now medallions. Ooh, medallions. Now there's... Now... Uh, this is why I recommend running the game at, at as high of a resolution as you can. Because when you're actually approaching, you can see what symbols they are. You can barely make, make out what, the, what they are. And if you've memorized the medallion solutions, you can have a solution ready in your head before you actually interact with it. So like, as I'm approaching, I can see that the first item slot is a snake, which is the only thing that I actually look at. Because as soon as I open it, I... And... Okay, snake, I know it's three down. And while I'm doing three down, I can al I already take a look at the second and third uh, symbols and figure out what to do in my head. So, uh, scale is down one, fish is down three. And that's it. Now, I'm still not going to discard the bolt cutters because I, if I have it discarded, the next item we'll pick up is going to go in here. We don't want that. The next item we pick up is a knife over here, and we want that to be kicked off uh, to a far away slot as possible. Now here, we want to do the other bookshelf push. This increases your success rate in RPD2 by a lot. It's like one grab slower, which may, is maybe a second, but it's definitely worth doing. Now over here, we'll, we want to pick up this pouch and then use the death net over here. <coughs> now, why would we exit this room is if this door is swung open, this bookshelf doesn't fall over from the explosive. If it does, it's really bad. Now, <coughs> this this is slightly harder because uh, the symbols are blotched out, and at the same time, you don't see it as you're approaching. So, like, you gotta be really fast with your solutions. What you can do is, as soon as you see it, you pause, you solve it on a piece of paper, or think about it for a little while, then you interact with it again and then input the solutions as fast as possible. Now, you can do that, but a lot of people will think very lowly of you if you do that. You can do it if you want, but just keep that in mind. So, it was this bird. I don't have this 
statue memorized, so I just try to go down. Especially the first symbol, I don't have it memorized at all, so I just go down until I see the woman. Now this I know it's down to, I believe. Wait, no, it's down four. I generally go down all the time. Except if I see a fish, I know it's up one. Yeah, you can memorize the medallions completely. What uh, One strategy to memorizing the medallions is memorizing the symbol before the solution. So you can memorize harp, branch. Okay, this is snake. So you can memorize harp, branch, bird. So you, you keep, just keep basically keep going down until you see a harp, okay, and then you know down one again. But if you memorize this uh, actual symbol, it can be hard to detect that you've actually arrived to the solution and you start. But so memorizing the one before this is really good. So oh harp, okay, down one. So you keep mashing, see a branch, okay, stop. Kind of kind of works out like that. That's a very good way of uh, that's a very good like beginner's uh, way of doing medallions and not losing too much time. You just keep going down until you see it. Worst case scenario, you move the dials uh, 15 times. Uh, best case scenario, you move them three times. Whereas if you actually me have memorized the entire medallions, best case is also three three medallion movements, but worst case is nine movements. Because if you do the correct solution, the worst possible scenario for a med uh, dial is three up or three down. So fish. Now over here, you just I just like to go this way. A lot of runs actually run towards the liquor, it doesn't matter. I just do this because it's a lot safer. Now this stairs. If you see three zombies down there, you want to climb back up. Three zombies down here are almost guaranteed to grab you because... Okay, it's actually not relevant for this category because, because there's only two zombies that are actually awake. But I'll cover it anyway. Now, when you're climbing upstairs, pressing down seems to do nothing. So if you actually want to change directions while you're climbing, you want to hold it until Leon changes direction. Now, it can be kind of hard to actually do, because Leon might end up moving up and up or down two steps before he actually recognizes that you're trying to tell him to go the other way. So let's say I have a lot of zombies downstairs. As soon as you see them, once you hold up and then you hold down again. Now that was kind of bad, but that's what you want to do. And that's better than getting bit. Now this zombie, you don't want to wake him up. Because later when you come over here, if he's up, he's just a potential zombie that, you, that can grab you. So you take a slightly wider right line around, and it's all, it doesn't trigger the zombie. Okay, now that you're over here, you've used both the bolt cutters and the spade gear, so you want to discard both. Now I haven't disc covered discarding, but basically what you want to do is, menu, F, up, F, up. F. Right? F up, F up, F. That's what I like to do, because the discard is at the bottom, so up one is obviously fastest. And the actual discard prompt is just two inputs, so it doesn't matter if you press up or down, but since you already pressed up and your finger is already on that, it's just easy to do F up, F up, F. F. Now let's pick this up. This, you can tilt your camera like, like this and barely get a look at what the medallions are before you approach. Now this, like, so the motion is a little bit too high for me to actually pick up what's over there, so I don't do it. Now interact with it. Fish, that's up one. Fish again. Oh, it's down three, okay. Bow is down three. Okay, that was some bad movement. Now this is the only part I actually tried the menu with two hands because the first medallion you just mash in with one hand. Now because there's a cousin playing, I can I can take my time setting up my hands. So as soon as I just I, as I skip the cousin, I'm pressing the use button with my right hand and I'm, I'm pressing the movement keys with my left. Now that that's really fast. This is the only place I do it because it's the only place that allows it. Now we go over here and we go up to the first boss fight. Now, Broken One, he's pretty simple to get down consistent because you have time for about 21 slashes, I believe, whereas he can be killed 
uh, in as low as 16 slashes. And usually 17 or 18. You're gonna be using the knife. And this is why 120 FPS is really great. And you want a consistent 120 FPS here. So, say you have your graphics uh, set up to the way you want, but you're still dropping frames on bosses, just go to image quality, turn it down to 50% for the fight. Skip the cutscene. Now, you wanna... Okay. Uh, space is the sub weapon uh, equipped key. You wanna have your knife equipped, not the flashbang. It can happen. Okay, I, have, I realize I haven't figured. Uh, uh, I haven't figured. Covered how to com equip items, but uh, we'll get there. Get there. For this fight, you want to press space when you get close to breaking. You want to. You don't want to press it now because then Leon will get into his um, knifing animation too early, and you're gonna lose time. So get close to him, press the knife button, and then start knifing him. You wanna aim down like this. No choice. Gotta take it down. And then just keep knifing at this angle, and he'll eventually die pretty easily. Now let's uh, do that again. And the angle that you wanna do is... You want the knife to be hitting both his legs and his small arm. That seems to hit the most hitboxes. There's, there are special angles, not really special, but there's like a couple swings where you can try to squeeze in some extra damage for like one less slash, but that, that's like minuscule time saves. For now, uh, don't worry about it. Just aim down. Knife him, start knifing him like this. And when he spins around, you can do a slash like this, which hits a little bit more and... You see how I just my angle a little bit there while he was spinning around to hit his other big arm. Other big arm on one end ends the nice slash while getting the rest, which is slightly extra damage. But in the end it saves around one or two slashes at most. Now we wanna go over here and use this. Okay, now what our inventory looks like is this. It's because we've filled up these four slots uh, with non-key items, the next items we pick up are all gonna go into good slots. And like these four slots are gonna get filled before these ever get filled, which we don't need to worry about for now because there aren't that many key items in the game. Eventually they're gonna cycle in and out of your inventory. That's a quick turn that I like to do. This I don't like to do a quick turn here because for some reason it seems to be ah, it seems to be losing time. Okay, uh, for the next cutscene to trigger, we need to interact with this. So open up the front, press mouse to do this as fast as possible. Hey, I'm not done talking to you. Now it over here. We'll close the door, and for the door to open again, it, it, it's a static amount of time. We don't need to. It, as long as you're ready to open the door, as soon as it opens, you're not going to lose the time. And there's this cutscene. Like this item. Okay, one thing I just realized that I want to talk about. Okay, you see how Leon is on the left of the game screen? Which is not always the case. In in fact, because I reloaded an autosave to do the broken one fight again, the game messed up and put the camera in the wrong position. Position for this room. This room, Leon should be down in the middle of the camera. In a run where you don't load any autosaves, this never happens. Like over every part of the game, the camera is going to be in the same position every single time. But the game has like two different camera positions depending on what rooms you're in. I don't know how what criteria it, uh, the devs used to change it, but uh, it's like that. 
So right now, because I loaded an autosave, the camera's in the wrong position. I don't know why it messes it up, but that's one thing to keep in mind when you're practicing. And that the practice involves uh, loading autosaves. Like, uh, uh, trying to do your movement uh, with different camera angles, like, uh, can be kind of weird. Like, uh, for this entire section, the camera should have Leon uh, be right in the middle, not on the left. And I want to go this way. Those dogs, just leave them alone. It's too slow to kill them. And the crank we picked up went into the best spot possible. And you want the crank to go that go that, because there's only two usages in the game where for the crank and we're gonna do them. And then we're gonna discard it. Now that electronic plug is gonna get used later. It's in a good slot, but we can spare the good slots because this section of the game doesn't have that many item usages. Okay, now this uh that, I talked about how when you approach something, a wall, but in this case an object, Leon will slow down before he approaches it. Now the annoying thing is, for when you're approaching an item, approaching something with a usage prompt, Leon will start slowing down well before the well before you can actually interact with it, which loses your time. A way around it is when you get close, you can aim, which sometimes stumbles Leon close enough that you don't lose that much time before you can actually interact with it. This, I don't like to do. Because sometimes, like, you can see how even though I aimed, uh, Leon slowed down anyway. What I like to do here instead is to adjust my approach angle just enough that the game's slowdown mechanic doesn't kick in. So I approach like this. Okay, it did. Damn it. Uh, th there are specific angles that you can do that it, it either doesn't kick in or it's not as severe but my son seems to be really hard on that okay now here you want to turn back as fast as possible and then grind this grind the gate uh, uh, hug the gate as close as possible god oh, damn okay, that was bad and, that, and that's how you dodge the uh, first dog and for over here your movement generally doesn't matter just try to do it as fast as possible now these aren't stairs don't stairs get on it those are actually stops now over here, stay on the left side a little bit, then turn right. The dog will uh, lunge on the left and you can miss it completely. Now this over here, you can get bit. And I did. Okay, that was actually really bad. Just try to keep a movement as clean as possible and the dog usually doesn't have time to catch up. That dog bite was unfortunate, but it happens. Now this over here, I like to... What some runners like to do is they'll finish their skating and they'll, they'll do one quick turn and then do another quick turn, which uh, works fine. But because of that bucket, which I absolutely hate, what I like to do is get up here and then do one aim turn and then manually turn the second time. Now over here, pick up this fuse. The fuse goes into down one. Now, okay, uh, if you're having trouble doing this dodge, the next dodge. Uh, at the shutter is a very hard dodge. I'm gonna show it to you. So you wanna hug the right side of the wall. Run wide, dodge the zombie, and when this zombie aggroes. Oh, that was bad of me. When that zombie aggroes. Oh damn. Uh, dodge to the right. Uh, that is uh, a very hard, especially because. The first zombie is free to dodge, you just run wide, but the second zombie, his position and angle can be different, which has come, sometimes has to be really hard to dodge. Okay, that was my fault. That should have been dodgeable. That wasn't very bad, energy. Okay, let's uh, I try it again. Now, an easier way to do this dodge is first dodge the first zombie, and then when this zombie aggroes, you can run backwards. Now this is slightly slower, but it's still faster than 
um, and then using a flash, which was the old strat. So if you're having some real trouble doing the easy dodge, then use the flashbang. But I recommend doing the easy dodge if you can't get the good dodge. Just run right on the aggros, run backwards, run back, and then use the fuse. This is not that much slow, maybe like a second. Okay, I'll show you the good dodge again. Okay, now I'll show you the flash thing. The flash is really easy. Now you don't want to flash yourself, no matter, even if you throw the flash as far away as possible, if you keep moving forward, you're gonna flash yourself, so I like to move to the right a little bit, just to delay myself enough that I don't get flashed. And while they're flashed, just use the fuse. And now, before you pick up that knife, I like to, okay, if I pick up that knife, it's gonna go into this slot, which is a slot that I want to save, so I discard the knife that's used in G1, and then pick up the knife, and the knife's gonna go into that slot. Okay, Elliot, he can sometimes be a problem, but usually not, especially in standard. Now we go this way, we we'll wanna... Wanna extinguish the fire at the helicopter. Okay, so... I'm continuing the example in which or I use the flash. If you use the flash, you wanna replace it. You really need to replace it. Because we need the flash. Now over here. If you're gonna replace the flash while you're coming over here, open this locker and then run over here. Then pick up this large gear that we need. And it'll go over here. Okay, so the flash would have been over here if you didn't use it. So, after you pick up this flash, your inventory is back to the way it should be, which is very good. Okay, now this club key. Okay, ah. Uh... Okay, there's no uh, autosave close to it, so don't get off, it's gonna be annoying. But, okay, to do this dodge, look at that piece of wood. You wanna run towards it, and you wanna hit the wall, and Leon will slow down, and then you wanna uh, turn with your mouse to the right. And just walk in. It's very simple. I wanna pick up that club key. Okay. Uh, you see how I managed to get back in before the door closed? That's very hard. You wanna add, as you wanna pick up the club key as soon as Leon's uh Leon can reach, then you wanna execute a perfect uh, turn back to be able to make it down inside. And now I wanna shoot this uh, shoot Misty, get out and then just run and use it. The old zombie should always be out, out of your way. Now if you don't. Uh, feel comfortable doing this or if you keep messing it up what you can do is use a flash Let's get rid of these two for now uh, So when you're running here as soon as you pass this object as soon as you press it press space and then throw a flash over there like the timing is like this the timing is as soon as you pass this press space, so you're, you're running as soon as you pass this press space and as, just keep mashing your mouse. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna use it. I can replace it. So, like, as soon as you pass this, pass this, run, throw it over there so it doesn't flash you and then use it. You wanna use it actually on the entry this time. And if it's timed perfectly, both the door will open, but both zombies will uh, be inside. You don't want them going outside because they're... That means they can block the door and everything. That's the timing you want to do. Now you want to extinguish uh, the helicopter. Okay. Actually, all the, all the demo I wasted is fine because I picked up extra in the RPD. Actually, over here, uh, you want two ammo left. So actually, we have a surplus of three. Okay, the mystery X dodge. 
you want to line up yourself up to the front part of the window and then aim at the strikes. Waste 3 ammo into waste 3. He will lunge. I believe there's not a save there. So stand over here, waste 3 ammo, and make sure you're aiming at him and not moving. You want your reticle to focus. You see how the reticle focused? If you're aiming at the same object for a while and you're not moving, then the reticle focuses. So stop here, aim, waste 3 ammo. Make sure the reticle focuses. Okay, I'm wasting 3 ammo because I want to have 2 remaining. You can have. Uh, I don't know how many amount remaining you can have even zero, which is fine. You just wanna have two remaining. Okay, since I used the uh, since I used the flash for the club key, uh, I wanna replace it with that. So if you if you're not flashing any zombies, the only flash you pick up in the RPD uh, is in the room where you pick up the detonator but if you use it uh the flashes that you want to replace them with are the locker flash and this flash but you want to pick them up after you use them you can pick them in pick them up in the rpd1 but uh in that case you might end up with the surface of flashes uh this way you don't lose time like they're out of your way the same amount but like you replace them in a more on-demand manner basically And you want to go back over here. Now we want to pick up this bench ammo. That's 11. That's why we wanted uh, 2 ammo left. Because we'll have 13 ammo after we pick that up and we reload. Now we go over here. This liquor. Okay, that was really bad. I missed him. That liquor, you want to shoot him as soon as uh, he's stable. Stable as in not moving, moving too much. Uh, that liquor can either uh, start moving on the ground or he can be on top of the ceiling. And as soon as you figure out which which one that liquor intends on doing, is the one you want to shoot him. And then you want to do your line as efficiently as possible because when you're shooting something that's on your right, can be kind of hard to start moving in the direction you were running. So you shoot something on the right and you can accidentally stumble to the right. You don't want that. So pick this up, reload. Okay, I hit him, he says stay on the ground. Now watch shooting that liquid. Okay, so here's an example of a key item that's like far out of the way. Now this is down too, but I like having it that way because In theory, uh, I could have put this down here and have the uh, have the club key up here, but these items are both one-time use items, so they're like one of them is gonna have a slow usage. So the, w the reason why I put this over here is because when this item is used, it disappears from your inventory. This, however, doesn't. So that's why I, I like to keep kick it off. Now over here, I discard that. Uh, the mechanical handle because we're gonna pick up this jack. I want the jack to go into that slot and when we exit, take down the inside line. That grenade is the one that I like to skip. Okay, Mr. X is here. Dodging Mr. X is pretty simple. You just want to do a quick turn. Uh, do two quick turns as soon as he, you see him throw a punch. Just move backwards and then uh, as soon as he finishes his punch, just aim, turn back to where you were running. Okay, now over here, you want to do the library manip. What I like to do is, right before the bench, throw shoot in front of the doors. It doesn't need to be that accurate. And if a zombie is over here, that zombie will move away. But if a zombie is not there, it's debatable whether that does anything or not. But if a zombie is over there, it gets rid of one more zombie from being a potential biter. Damn it. And with a zombie sleeping and one zombie baited out of the way, then only zom one zombie can actually uh, get you. That drastically reduces the chances that you might get bit. So, since we already did one uh, pre workshop push in the RPD, we only need to do two. And uh, we need to go to the clock tower. 
and hug the wall as wide as possible. You don't want that zombie to aggro. Okay, here's an example of... Okay, so if you run straight to it, Leon's gonna slow down. But here's an actual, actual easy example of uh, changing your approach angle. If you change your approach angle a little bit... Okay. You see how Leon didn't slow down when I had my approach angle like this? I don't know why for that angle Leon doesn't slow down, but as soon as I enter, I change my further angle like this and get uh and use it like that so I don't lose time with Leon slowing down. And you want to pick up this item after you use it. So the thing is, you can actually put uh, if you put the item in as fast as possible, like at Leon's maximum reach when he's. When you want to pick up the item again, he's, he might be actually be a little bit too far away. So you can either get a little bit closer before you use it, so when you pick up the item, you're guaranteed to be able to pick it up, or you can actually hold forward, so after the item is being done used, you can make Leon move a little bit for, forward and to guarantee he picks up the item. But it depends on what happened in the moment. If you think if, if you think Leon's not gonna reach, just hold forward. I'll go back this way. I want to pick up the small gear. Also, same thing if you run directly at it. Leon's gonna slow down, change your approach angle, take them more to the right. Leon's not gonna slow down, and we want to put the large gear in there. Now, this quick turn is kind of really hard to, uh, to do a tight line. And what is small gear over here? And another example of a uh, slightly off approach angle, so Leon doesn't slow down. Uh, this room is full of them. Hope I don't have to write a report on this. Pick this up. Okay, I stopped to explain a lot of things. So Mr. X had, a, had the time to actually get over here and actually get over there, which is actually good for, in this context, but most of the time he might be blocking your way. So you might have to dodge him if you do the room in a, in a relatively fast manner. And you want to use that drop down to drop. And now we're done with our pretty too. I want to get the hell out of here. Okay, now, uh, if for some reason you're grabbed and you use the flash, you can replace that flash with this flash if you haven't picked it up. You got one chance. But if you already have a flash, you don't need to, but you need one flash, and you can't afford to lose it. Now, this part's really heavy RNG. Zombies can be positioned in like a million different ways. You just want to shoot them as you see them. And you get try to get through. Uh, it, it can be really hard to determine whether or not you can just run past the zombie depending on their angle, uh, the way they're moving, their their probable aggro animation. So if you're not sure, just shoot them in the head. It's not much time loss. Now this, I've tried a million million different lines. I've tried like spaghetti lines. I've tried straight lines, and I've come to the conclusion that it's oh my god, this is actually really bad RNG. I've come to the conclusion that it's not manipulatable at all. Just try to lo minimize the time left in the the time uh, you spend in the room as much as possible, so the freaking dogs don't have as much of a chance to bite you. Okay, now this you want to examine the item and spin it around uh, to use it. So what it does F F down F so examine so now here F down F to examine spin it around with your mouse. You can I cut instinctively try to move my mouse to the left so it feels like I'm grabbing from the left to move it to the right, which is not necessary. You can just click anywhere your mouse is and then move your mouse to the right. And you want to like get used to how much you want to turn this before you can open it up, but just, I try to do it really fast. Ah, start of speedruns. And then use it, and when you use both both fuses, this you're gonna want to do this puzzle. Now how I do this puzzle is right F up, F, left, F, right, right, F, up, F twice, right, F once, up, F once, left. I like to do it in that order. There might be faster orders, uh, and if you're learning it, you can try to look for the fastest one, but that's one what I like to do. Now, pick up this, and if you need a fast, there's a fast over here. 
And there's also a fast in the arc for the main lobby if you need it. Now this part, what you want to do is you shoot this guy in the face and then throw a flash. Okay, that was a little bit early. Why we want to do it is because Mr. X shows up. Okay, there's actually an autosave so I can demonstrate it. If you just throw a flash, we don't get close enough for Mr. X to show up before that first zombie grabs us. And he's in the way. He's gonna cause problems. We, at the very least, we have to execute the dodge in between two zombies, which can be kind of awkward. So what we do here is shoot the zombie and get as close as possible, throw the flash. Okay, that was... Uh, that was too early. You want to get grabbed by a zombie and then have the grab break out of the zombie grab, which means you don't stagger yourself, even though you're really close to a flash. That's the fast way to go about it. You grab by that zombie. Oh, that was perfect. Flash everybody. And get out of here. And use the keycard over here. The keycard should be in the first slot. Okay, now that we're done with R32, our inventory looks like this. There was a flash here over here that's used. Uh, this slot was never used. We have a disc item that's we're never gonna use again, that's just being a nuisance over here. Yeah, ideally it could be over here, but because we pick up a flash early in R31. Uh and we don't even have expanded inventory slots before we pick up a flash, so we can't I'll put a flash over here and do this, so... so that, that's, that's just what I do. Now, the amount of ammo you have, you need... I believe, uh... One for the croc, one for the zombie. So, I believe you need two ammo for here. Okay, oh, this is very important. You want to turn right over here and run through well, the right of this exactly this military vehicle. For some reason, it causes Ada to start running as early as possible. Otherwise, if Ada walks for too long, uh, this sequence is going to take longer and waste like time. Now over here, what a mess. Uh, this picking up this grenade is kind of hard. I haven't figured out a, like a, an effective approach angle in which Leon doesn't slow down. I might be that just running straight at it might be the best option. But then you want to turn kind of in like not a 90, 180 degree kind of weird angle, which is kind of hard to do on a keyboard. But I like to do it like this. I believe the amount of time Leon slows down is the same. And I like the mouse over to here. This wouldn't be a problem if we picked up a grenade in R31, uh, the grenade near the jack, in which case our inventory is full with this slot being the only free one, so the grenade will naturally go into this slot, but I like skipping that grenade because it allows me to take down the inside line after I exit the room. Otherwise, the zombie that comes out of the window is blocking our way, and we have to go wide around, which kind of loses some time. So this, I, because this was the first time uh, we interacted with the grenade, we got the uh, introduction prompt. We can use that to mass it over here and not lose that much time. And as soon as we get up, we can quick turn right. Now uh, this long barrel, also an item we've never interacted with. Introduction prompt. Move your mouse over here. Okay, I'll slide you off, and then mouse it over there. So, our inventory is, uh, again, set up. For the next section of the game, all the non-essential items are put into non-essential slots. With the good four slots being free. Heard of the Umbrella Corporation? They're a pharmaceutical company secretly making bioweapons. They have a virus. And uh, now this section is honestly the most boring part of that the run because the like, things I've seen. after the gel cells give us like five minutes of just uh, basically one, running and talking, not a single enemy to be seen, or like 
Based just a few items said, because not a single puzzle item usage or anything not worthy. Gee, thanks. Can't imagine a real scientist being down here. Come on, sewers are run by the city. How could they have a facility without the authorities knowing? Now there's an item box over here that we can. Technically use, but that, that's fine. Uh, the only item we want to get rid of is the club key, which is useless. But uh, since we are the bank only one time in the run anyway, uh, banking there to get rid of that for one inventory slot is useless. Okay, this ammo, that's 5 ammo. If you're running low on ammo, you can pick that up. That's the closest ammo you can pick up. There's some camo in, ammo in Kendo's uh, uh, gun shop, but that's really far out of the way. But if you're like, if you have zero ammo, you're stuck with me to the end. If you have zero ammo, you're gonna need ammo for the croc, so you need to pick that up. But it's not that far out of the way, which is good. Now this, it's really easy. It's left, right, left. Man, who would have figured that? Make sure to stay to the right a little bit longer because he bites twice. And then run to the left. Well, plenty of time. It's not that hard. Now after the third bite, don't you do anything? Just hold the aim button so you aim instantly after Leon becomes ready. Move the camera a little bit upwards, and then shoot. And then there's that grenade. You can take your time picking it up. We're waiting for it anyway. Chew on that, you overgrown son of a bitch. Nice, Leon. And uh, there's the Mr. Raccoon over there if you want it. But generally, you don't want to waste the ammo. Up here. What the hell was? Just get up here. Okay, this uh, uh it is stopping over you here before the, the door is uh her waiting for you. I want to get as close as fast as possible, so uh, I mean get as close as possible, so she decides to move. But her walk to the elevator is uh static. You can. Just come by and wait by the elevator, or you can run behind her, or you can circle around her, it doesn't matter. Now, okay. For some reason, if you're looking this way, Ada doesn't trigger the elevator to move. I actually want to be looking over this way. I don't know why, but it's, it's just the way it is. Our military? Somebody else's? They don't sell the monsters. They sell the viruses that make them. And Annette is who makes the viruses. Scary as that alligator was, the net is far more dangerous. Okay, now we're done with that. Okay, now, if you're running this game on a hard drive, uh, chances are you probably haven't noticed any loading screens or any excessive loading screens. The only loading screens in the game is actually when you start a game or when you load a save or when you exit a game and you're going back to the inventory, uh, into the main menu. But this is the only place in the game that, as far as we can tell, uh, you cannot want an SSD for. But if you don't have an SSD or you just prefer to keep a game in your hard drive, it doesn't matter. Just pause here for like 5 seconds while the game uh, is loading in the background. And then... This store should be triggered a lot of in the next person will play. If the game hasn't actually loaded, uh, the game won't let you interact with that door while the game finishes loading everything. It's it happens on consoles and it happens on PCs with slow hard drives or even hard dri fast hard drives. If you have an SSD, it's probably not gonna happen. Okay, secret weapon time. One thing you want to know is you want to memorize all the positions uh, these things are in, are in so you can preemptively aim aim as to the right spot. And okay, so. If you notice, when you press it once, just one press is enough to fill a quarter of the way, but it slows down. So, and if you hold it, it moves at a steady pace. But the initial startup when you hold it is faster than uh, sp uh, speed it fills up at. So, it's actually faster to mash your mash mouse on. So uh, the initial uh, initial filling speed uh, doesn't settle and it just keeps getting uh, st started and stopped uh, in 
non-stop, which ends up being faster. Uh, mashing everything uh, uh, saves you around 10 seconds over the entire data section. Might be even more. You don't need to mash like super fast, but just mash as fast, fast as possible. Now this, okay, another thing. So, because like the last mash you do fills up, fills it up past what it was uh, when you stop mashing. So like you can st stop mashing and you can let it go. Okay, actually this is a better example. You're, if you're mashing and you let it go before it finished, finished, it'll finish on its own. Like, you can see how close it's uh, getting to finished with just one tap, so, like, when it's like 75% complete, one more mash allows you to have it completed, so, you want to just get a filter over here and then uh, do other stuff that you need to do. Like, over here, do other stuff. This saves you time. Like, you can hear it finishing on its own. Like, that was like less than 75% and finished anyway. So you want to do it for everything, right? Not, not exactly. You don't want to do it for this because after this explodes, the the prompt to jump down the ledge takes a while. So you want to finish off the fan completely and then uh, do the switch, and then you're still gonna be waiting for the uh, climb down prompt to appear anyway. Now you want to go this way. Okay, for that switch, what you want to do is run to the right of the floor where the zombie drops, do it, and then run directly backwards. And you want to do it uh, exactly like that, otherwise the zombie can aggro and grab you. Now, this zombie is kind of an asshole. If he's like right on the turn, he can be hard to get a shot at. And over here, this one can be kind of hard to instantly get a shot at. Okay, that. Uh, is there an auto save? God damn it, there, there isn't. Okay, basically, you, this trigger, you want it to, you want to uh, interact with this trigger after you hear the switch finish. Because you're letting go before the switch is actually uh, switched, uh, and you're letting it finish itself off autom uh, automatically, if you interact with this before the switch switches, even though like Ada physically pulls down the lever after uh, the switch uh, might finish, it, the game uh, doesn't recognize it and doesn't uh, open the door. And you want to switch this. Then you want to blow out this fan. Uh, stair skating with the eight is kind of weird. Some people swear by stair skating with the secret weapon. I don't. I think they're the same speed. So, and at the same time, I prefer using the pistol. So I just use the pistol. Now this we want to do an aim turn because generally, uh, generally turns greater than ninety degrees are greatly benefited by aim turns. Bravo. Okay, here you want to waste all the bolts you have because this game has a dynamic difficulty system that you cannot turn off. And missing bolts lowers it. So you don't want the bolts. It's Ada, but they have shared, Ada and Leon share the same DA. So you want to waste them over here. Not much, but it's something. Now this section, you want to switch that, blow that up, switch this, blow this up, switch this, and blow this up. If you're extremely fast, you can uh, finish everything. In one. When the time count on timer is 45 seconds, if you can get a 45 seconds, that's really good. If you get a 44, that's still good. Uh, generally, you don't want to go slower than 44. And now we're done with the 80 section, which is infinitely better than Sherry. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. Now, this, uh, you want to cook turn right. Uh, you want to start moving to right and down. 
because that's you? how the camera angle uh, is set up. There's a box over there that we don't need. Okay, for some reason you don't have any ammo. There's ammo over there that you can pick up. We need two. And it's essential. If you don't have two, pick up that ammo. And the sewers can be... Uh, can You can get easily lost in the sewers casually, but thankfully the speedrun routes were relatively simple. Right now, there's only one way we can go anyway, so we're just going that way. Now this, this, this zombie is always gonna turn right, so it's like uh, free to get past. Uh, this zombie you wanna sh shoot at his head before he starts turning, so slight, from slightly far away. Now, okay, this knife, I don't pick up this knife anymore, but it, it's, uh, it saves only a couple seconds, and it makes the rest of the run really risky, so... I'm gonna pick it up for them uh, for the tutorial. Okay, now so we need the two ammo, one for that zombie and one for this GFL. GFL dodges up when they're burned to the ground are really easy. Just don't get too close. Whoa, okay, I've never seen this. A debris being on them. So when you're around this distance, you wanna shoot them and then just run past. It's not that precise. You just don't wanna uh, the uh, range. Where you can shoot at the Geodot and not be too close or too far is pretty wide, so Interesting. Just don't be too close. If you're too close and you, if you're too close, you can get knocked back by the uh, Geodot. Uh, Where'd she go? Uh, Geodot burst uh, out of the water. If you shoot him when you're too close, just stop moving for a second and then run past. Uh, don't just try to run past and look out, because if you get staggered uh, by uh, DJ Adult, he's gonna grab you. Now we go this way. Want the T-bar handle. Now this... It can be... Uh, there's an argument to be made for whether or not it's useful to put it into a different slot because you only use it twice and you have to like get rid of it later but because like there's like only three more key items it's i don't really bother with it okay this just uh when you to dodge those dodging the fat zombie is consistent our dodging the Asian zombie, you want to stair skate down at least the middle of the stairs. You want to stair skate at least uh, down the middle of the stairs, and then so you can get a good turn right. If you if you stair skate down the right side of the stairs, the Asian zombie usually gets you. You can stair skate down like the left side and then do a very aggressive turn right, which gets you a better angle before. When the Asian zombie starts aggroing on you. Now I want to go this way. There is a pouch here that we want to grab. It's like real or free. Now after the pouch is grabbed. What I end up... Okay. This is part of the reason why I skipped this knife. If I had didn't grab this knife. I would have been able to put the... Uh, rook plug like right here and been fine. But we've... Well, because the knives take... Uh, we didn't have these two slots when we picked up, picked up the knife. If we had, we would have been able to kick it off over here, but... Since we didn't, I just put it over here for now. And you want to do this part really fast, because that's all we can uh, try to grab you. And you want to pick up that ammo. That ammo going to a good slot is fine, because we're gonna use it and reload it out of the way. Uh, before we get to, uh, get to another item. Also, the rook plug is a one-time use item, so it having it being in, on a bad slot is fine. Whereas the king and queen plug, which we're gonna grab later, it gets used like three or four times. Now over here, if you see a, a G adult, shoot it before you climb down the ledge. Uh, it'll make the G adult burrow down into the water, guaranteed. Otherwise, if he's over here, same thing. Shoot it, and then one fast. 
Don't get let yourself get staggered by it. Okay, now for some reason the Asian zombies over here. That's really good RNG. Generally, you want to stay away from these zombies while you climb up the way so they can't aggro and grab you. And if they're in the way, shoot them. Shoot them in the head. It can be really hard to consistently get faster because there's like six different ways they can be in different positions. It's really annoying and uh, if, if I were to try to explain every single one of them would be here all day. And now we want to go up. Ah, uh, to the King and Queen plug room. We have one ammo in our, in our inventory, extra ammo in our inventory, which is fine. This is getting worse. Okay, so over here, there's a G adult who want to shoot it like this and then dodge it like this. Now, this G adult, you want to hug this wall and as soon as you can see him, you want to shoot him. If you do it right, he's gonna dive and be out of the way. That's like uh, the if he's not diving out of the way, then you're getting too close and you're letting him see you before uh, before you shoot him. You want to do it as fast as possible. That other G adult that came out of the pipe just uh, run wide around him. I want to pick up this clean plug and use it over here. Uh, this is how we do this room. It's like it, this room is very technical because there's a lot of walls, a lot of doorways that can mess up your movement. But it's very easy because we don't interact with the zombie in the room because we don't pick up the flamethrower. Now, if you're in a situation where you have both the king and the queen plug and you you're forgetting which one to use, always use the queen plug. Like in every situation, if you have both, the queen plug uh, always gets used first. At least for the speed run around. Because of the order we interact with the animals. Now picking up this up with a manual turn can be really hard, but that's why I prefer to do a quick turn. Like, you just, you just gotta actually do this room to uh, master it, it's very hard. Now, the G adults are in a good spot. If you always see a G adult that's like around this area, you can shoot it and it'll burn down into water and generally it'll stay out of your way. If a G adult's too far away and you shoot it, it, it will still burrow back into the water, but it'll pop back out and it'll be a pain. So it's, if it's too far away, it's better to not shoot, shoot it and just deal with it. Okay, so how you deal with G adults? Ah, uh, there's an auto save. Okay, this is really good RNG. They're like both out of the way. This is free RNG. Okay, I'm gonna load the auto save to see if I can get some bad G adult RNG to demonstrate. Okay, good. So this one. Good RNG is when they start spitting out babies. Okay, yeah. If it does that, run uh, down the right side. Your right side. Usually, unless the G adult's like really hugging a wall, you can usually squeeze past very easily before uh, the G adult can do anything to you. Okay, again. Most of the time... Okay, it started spitting babies a little bit too early, but you should still be fine. Always run down that side, because... On the other side, the babies that uh, the G adult is spitting out can uh, hit you and that can be really bad. And now let's see what this guy does now. Okay, he's not doing anything. Okay, so we, uh, we can bait a grab and then squeeze fast. Okay, that was really bad. Okay, that was one of the situations where, like, the wall is completely blocked off. There's no space to, like, squeeze fast. So that was just, uh, just bad RNG. But uh, what I was essentially trying to do is bait a grab, like, you would do, uh, like, you would bait a Mistrix launch. Yeah, this is really good RNG. Okay, we'll do it one more time. There's, like, a million different ways for the G adults to go. I can't uh, exactly demonstrate all of them. Okay, he's spitting babies really early. Okay, now that's really rare RNG, but you can usually get past as long as they have enough HP to tank it. On standard, they uh, don't deal that much damage. Okay, now this is the action one. 
Okay, I don't know why the spinning baby is really low. Maybe it's because of the auto save. Again, and he's angled in a really different way. But we're still able to get past. Spinning babies is generally very good, aren't you? Now this. You want to climb this ledge. And you want to aim so you don't climb down the ledge, but you want to be uh, grinding the ledge. And as soon as uh, the GL does coming towards you, throw it throws out its grab. You want to let uh, stop aiming, in which uh, which will make Leon climb down, down the ledge instantly. It takes a few tries to get used to. Now over here, hug this right wall because there's one zombie over there. Oh, that's really bad, RNG. That's really bad, energy. Usually, it's on Claire that that zombie can be on the stairs. But the fat zombie was on the stairs. That's very rare. Not much you can do if he's there. You, like, you can try to run around his back and he, he can not aggro accurately towards you, but I wasn't expecting that. I really wasn't expecting that. Okay, now for this puzzle. Yeah. Queen plug first. Pick this up. Plug. Now you can see how like all the items that are cycling out of your inventory are, are going to the good slots. Now this, the root plug is the only item that's like over there, so you, you want to do this twice, which is really bad. However, if you didn't pick up this knife, it would it would be just like it would be like right over here, which would be a very easy usage. This knife wouldn't exist. But I since I generally recommend picking up the knife because otherwise the route's gonna be really hard. Uh, you're gonna have to do this. But it's only one item usage, whereas every other plug gets used from a good slot. Okay, almost there, Ada. Okay, oh, yeah, yeah, okay. let's pick that up. Okay, my DA is a little bit too low. You know, the DA where the game is dynamic like just the difficulty of the game. It should be closer to 6,000. Like, it should be at, uh, like 5,900 or 6,000. So I'm gonna pick up some extra items to increase it a little bit. Uh, that red herb over there should do it. I don't want to do the fight on the lower DA. It makes it uh, easy. Uh, for demonstration. Okay, 5800, okay, that's not, uh, not enough. Okay, that blue, wait, I wonder if this increases DA. I believe it does. No, it doesn't. Maybe I have to combine with it with something. Yeah, okay, 58 to 54. I need 150 DA. Uh, the, when you take damage, it loses your DA. That's like your biggest source of DA loss. And when you heal back up, it doesn't increase your DA as much. Okay, there's more uh, stuff to pick up in, over there that I can use to inflate my DA a little bit. Okay, this will have to do. Uh, 59, 34. Okay, that's not gonna make that much of a difference. Okay, so these are like items I wouldn't have. Okay, but your inventory doesn't matter for now. I'm gonna use um with this and this to keep them out of the way. I should have banked that further. So this, uh, what I like to do is change my approach angle to something like this. And if you get it right, you can interact with it without Leon slowing down. Okay, now, um, so as soon as you get over there, Burke is gonna uh, start attacking you, and he's gonna want to do some ceiling uh, slashes to try to get at you. But if he takes too much damage, he's gonna immediately go over to the door, to the shutter. Now you want to trigger that as fast as possible, and how you do it is to throw a grenade and 
have it explode as soon as he pops up. So if you throw a grenade. Okay, that was slightly delayed, but basically his hitbox spawns like maybe over here or over here. I don't know exactly where, but that grenade deals full damage to him and he moves on to the shutter and starts breaking down instantly. Now you want to run down the right side of the shutter, even though it's slightly farther away. It makes or can chase you in a slightly different manner. Oh god, I should have saved. Actually, before I get there, I... Yeah, okay. Wait, no. Yeah, I should save. Ah, uh, because uh, the autosave in the fight is not really useful for demonstration purposes. Like, not useful at all. Okay, let's try to inflate our DA back. Okay, it's gonna be slightly lower than last time, but what the hell. Okay, so you want to run back, and as soon as you mm, get past this black, whatever the hell it is, like tar or something, I don't know. I uh, oil maybe, I don't know. Uh, you want to press space to uh, throw the grenade. Okay, so, how you want to do this fight? There's two different RNGs. I'll try to demonstrate both. Okay, so, uh, Birkin should be far away enough that he doesn't... shouldn't try to grab you by the end, by before you drop down the ledge. If you run down the left side of the shutter, uh, Birkin follows you just slightly earlier, which causes it to happen, but you want to run down on the right side and then not mess up your movement. In which case, Birkin will be far farther away from you on on the platform, but before he doesn't waste time uh, trying to grab you, he's closer to you uh, when both of you drop down. It's what you want. So we want to press this button and then bait, bait grab. Now, he, he's, I, based on what sounds he's making, I know he's going for a lunch attack, which is good. So you dodge it, start knifing him. It's very simple. And then just keep knifing him until your knife breaks. And when your knife breaks, pick up these two items because you're gonna need them. And now then press the button again, go back, knife him some more. Drop his HP down to less than 50%. And that's it. Okay, now I just realized that I haven't talked about the SRT yet. The SRT, okay, yeah, that's how you this. The SRT is uh, the speedrunning tools for this game uh, that can show you some information from, uh, about the game, like your DA, your inventory, and your HP and uh, enemy HPs. And it's very useful for Jito because you want to drop him below 50% for the crane to kill him in one shot. No. The grenade throw is not very precise, it, it can be like pretty much anything. On the right. Okay, so last time I did a lunch, I, he did a lunch attack, and I actually didn't drop my graphical settings, and my frame rate was dropping below 100, and I still pulled out the fight. Because that's because you have a lot of extra time to pull out the fight correctly. Now, what you don't want to do is, okay, I'm gonna drop down my graphics settings. Okay, uh, when you have a 120 FPS, okay, let's see if I can make it happen. Lunch attack. Three, four, five, six. Okay, he dropped down on the sixth flash. Now let's see the timing. Now I got you. 
Yeah, the, he gets up still. Not early. I guess that's fine. Sometimes what can happen is... If you do really good knife slashes, like absolutely insane knife slashes, and he drops down really fast, he can get up like when you're pressing the button to call the crane back, and he can get an attack on him, which you don't really want. That can like ruin the fight. So like if you're getting get getting the fight too well, uh. You can either just use the fact that your frame rate is dropping, which mine was, but it's not really consistent, consistent so it's not a good idea. Uh, or you can just, just change your uh, knifing angle so you knife him slightly less efficiently. Uh, generally, downing him on the 7th slash is... is ideal. Okay, uh, so both uh, those two other times he did the lunch attack. Yeah, I'll, I'll try to demonstrate the other attack he did, which is the triple claw attack. You can tell when he's doing that attack by the sound he makes. His lunch sound is very distinctive. And that's the only two attacks that he can do in this manner of the fight, when you're baiting his attack, like, uh, the way I'm doing right now. Okay, not good. Okay, this honestly is kind of crap, but okay. I'm gonna stop to press the button over here and try to aim it correctly. Time it correctly. Okay, this is the triple claw thing, but he's a little bit too close because the auto save scuffed. And he's only a little bit longer if I press the button. Okay, that's the triple claw attack. Uh, on a real fight where he, you know his positioning is not uh, screwed up because of the auto save, this is actually the range where he'll be, uh, where he starts doing the triple claw attack, and he generally won't be close to hitting you. When he does this, uh, while you're waiting for him to finish attacking, you want to grab the items over here, like they're directly behind you, but you can pick them up pretty easily. And when he do does this third claw attack, which is a slam, and he's not gonna reach you, you want to go in and start knifing him. Now in this instance you want really good knife slashes because you have a little bit less time before you have, uh, knife him enough times. Okay, my family dropping worked against me. If you're at, if you're at 120 it still should be relatively simple. Uh, you want to drop him below 50%. And after you've dropped him below 50%, uh, the way a uh, the way a uh, grab lunch bait works is okay. I'll try to show it up again. Okay, that was lunch. That's fine. Oh, that is not fine. Okay, that's that was partially to my fault. I didn't get good knife slashes for him to stagger. We generally want to get good knife slashes so we stagger the stuff before he actually goes down for the stun. Okay, he staggered. The way he staggers can change his angle, so you gotta compensate for it. Get my knife broke, good. Pick out these items. That's the thing. Now, when he gets up, he should usually roar and then try to chase you. You want to bait him enough. You can, uh, if you just run past him while he's running against you, he's got, probably going to track you. But uh, if you just wait a little bit, uh, if you just wait enough, he'll think he's actually close to grabbing you. He'll think that he's actually close to grabbing you and. He'll make uh, a distinctive sound of, uh, when he started his grab animation, in which case you can just run past him and uh, bait a grab. 
And that's how you want to get him uh, stuck for, uh, for the crane to hit. Okay, that's essentially the fight. And okay, now that we've saved Ada, now is the only time we're back in the game. Nice. Where'd you get that? Okay, so when you're back, okay, my inventory is a little bit screwed up because when I was speaking of that, as I messed it up a little, it really should be like this, I believe. Yeah, it should be like this. So you, you want to bank the TFR handle and the clock key. And if you, if you're, uh, yeah, uh, if you didn't break your first knife and you manually switch to this knife, you can do it. In which case, bank both knives and. If you have this knife and you want to be a little bit more safer in labs to use it as a defensive item, you can keep it. But if you didn't grab the, the Sewer's Barrel knife, which is this knife, this is from the uh, from the G4. If you didn't grab this, you need this fight for G, this knife for G3. Otherwise, you can either bank it if you don't think you'll need it as a defensive item in labs, and you picked up the Sewer's knife. Or otherwise, if you have a different knife you can use as a defensive item, you can keep it. In which case you can bank this knife and keep this, it doesn't matter. But essentially, if you didn't, uh, if you don't have two fold knives, you want this this knife to, you want to save this knife. So just bank the tool and the clock key. Now we're on to labs, hopefully. Okay, this spot is probably the one where your inventory is most screwed up because you pick, after you're done using all your key items, uh, there ha happens to be a knife and a flash at the G2 fight, which goes into like two of your most favorite slots. Okay, not actually two, just one. Actually, all, uh, actually two. Yeah. So this, this, these two are from the fight, and they, they take up like rather rather the slots. This is where the T bar was, and we just banked it. Maybe a one way ride. So be prepared. Then. This tram is bound for Nest. Do not exit until the final destination. Okay, now, uh, there's a problem with the ID wristband. You want to mouse it away somewhere. Don't want to put it too far away. Uh, sometimes your inventory is different for labs, depending on what you did. But, so, like, I don't have, like, a fit spot for it, but uh, in this situation, I will put it over here. You don't use it directly, but you combine like uh, three items into it, so you don't want it to be too far out of the way. But if you're good at mass menuing, it's fine. You can have it anywhere and just mass over it, over the items you want to combine with it. For your safety, stand clear until the doors are fully open. For your safety, stand clear until the doors are fully open. For your safety. And now on Leon, you go this way first. On Claire, you go the other way because you're carrying Sherry. Okay, now the, the soldier zombie minute. When you're like right here, you want to shoot like the blue part or at least near the blue part of the door. That if that baits the, uh, the zombie that's in that room close to this wall, which will help us run past him later. Now. Uh, on Leon, we we'll want to pick up this cafeteria grenade and then run down this way because that zombie is blocking that way. That way is not that fast anyway. Okay, since uh, we picked up the barrel knife, I'm gonna pick this up. And what if we get the worst amount of crit here? And uh, that uh, think about the introduction screens. That we want to use that to not lose much time when we're combining. What the hell? When we're combining this with this. this might come in handy. And okay, look, this uh, soldier's on the minute worked. I can just run past. If it didn't, you can either shoot him with the pistol, but it's kind of hard because at this point your DA is high enough that zombies start tanking headshots, or you can use a leftover G2 knife on it as a defensive item. Okay, since... Uh, okay, this knife's extra. I'm gonna discard it now. Your presence okay. is urgently 
And we'll pick up the shotgun and we want to combine it with this. The long barrel that we've been carrying for the entire game. Now, your inventory is like totally messed up, but... Uh, the good thing about the labs is there's only two key items. Like, there's just, like literally only two key items, so... And, like, you know, one key item, the dispenser you use uh, three times, and the signal modulator you only use twice. Okay, so we go this way first. Our DA seems, seems a little bit low still, but we'll get to G3. There's a green over there if you need it. And, okay. Uh, one thing, good thing about the long barrel is not only does it actually make your shotgun really good, it gives you four extra shotgun shells without a DA increase. Uh, shotgun shells in this game increase the DA by a lot, by like 50 per... Uh, per shot, which is kind of significant. But like, you pick up four shotgun shells, that's like, like 200. And that can make G3 like, like a, se a few seconds slower. So like, you want to use just this eight, the four that come from the shotgun itself, four that come from the barrel, and no more. And you want to have like a decent amount of handgun ammo, which if you didn't waste too much, you should have. Now this... Yeah, this is another example of changing your approach angle. When you run directly to it like this, so if you're just, if you're just, just aiming slightly more to the left, Leon doesn't slow down. Those are these. Uh, it's, it's a good idea to memorize them as like a keypad. Wanted flash. Ooh, okay. Before I pick up, what I should have done is... While waiting for that door that's blocked, being uh, kind of slowed down by the IV, what I like to do is menu and I move an item out of out of this slot away, and have this go over here, because this gets used three times. You wanted this to go into a good slot, or uh, you can do displacement. What displacements are is okay. So when we're initially picking up the uh, the dispenser. We can force it into a slot that's already occupied by an item. Then the game will move it to move the item that's being already being over here to the nearest slot, which is over here. Now that's slower because there's like a delay in the inventory closing when that happens, and also the game dictates what slot the item gets kicked off to. But if you do it manually, I want to keep this slot for later. So it's better to move for me to in this case to move this knife away to this slot. So I can have both this and this slot free for items. Uh, that I was just showing there. Don't mind him. Manual mode engaged. Adjust the amount of solution to match cartridge. Oh, this solution is. Oh, damn! I messed that up. Uh, this solution is uh, very easy to memorize. It's uh, red, green, blue. Actually, I'm having trouble recalling it from memory. I think it's red, green, blue, red, green, blue, red, green. So, basically RGB, RGB, RGB. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's RGB, 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 but uh, I'll link... I'll. I'll link a puzzle solution sheet in the description so we don't mess it up. Okay, so over here you want to shoot this ivy with the pistol ivies. Okay, this ivy can be slightly closer or not depending on how fast or slow you were, but aim carefully at a ball and then shoot it accurately. Like aim carefully, don't just wildly play it out at it because if you miss, you can lose your run. Now, okay, this was one of the most problematic parts of the run. Uh, for now, you want to just uh, throw a grenade over there. You want to not hug this wall. You want to be a slight around here, otherwise the grenade's not going to reach. You want to throw a grenade. That should kill all three zombies. And then you want to run down this way. And now, this liquor. You want to uh, look down. What? Okay, that makes no sense. 
If you're looking down, that liquor shouldn't look you, but he did that time. I have no idea how that happened. It never happens in a run. Lab lectures are not consistent at all, as we'll soon find out. Now, okay, here you have a choice. Generally, if you picked out a, if you picked out a barrel knife and you have like three fold knives right at this very moment, probably means you're doing safe G three, which is a few seconds slower. In which case, you want to save a flash, so you will shoot these zombies with the shotgun. Uh, the DA has increased to the point that these zombies cannot be just stunned with a pistol shot, so you need to use the shotgun. But if you did not pick up the barreled knife, I really don't recommend doing that. Only I do that. It's really an optimized strat, and that's really hard. Now, these liquors aim down so they don't lick you. I swear that when you do that, they don't lick you. And when you get past, throw a flash. Murph is QDSSS. Run back. We got this greener for safety. Just in case Lickers get you. Welcome back, Dr. Lee. You have five new messages. Okay, I'll do it one more time and try to explain it a little bit thorough. But this is Look. essentially what okay, what, doing, what essentially what you'll try to do to get past Lab Lickers. Basically bait one attack. Get past, throw a flash, and then oh, use the uh, item and uh, use the signal modulator and run back. And now on uh, this, on the second attempt, <coughs> what you can do is around this spot, you can shoot the ground, and that'll bait them in like the way that makes it easier for the, for the for you to bait the attacks out of them, which uh, which will buy you a little bit of extra time. So you can run past them. If you don't, uh, they can. If you're if they're like late uh, chasing at you on the uh, when when you're close to exit the room, they can uh, chase after you in more efficient manners, like try to grab you even. So you want them to come at you early, uh, throw out an attack and miss, and then spend a little bit more time organizing their thoughts to try to get at you. Okay, now this time this one liquor won't grab me. Just aim down. I mean, it won't lick me. Yeah, if you're aiming down, liquors are much less inclined to lick you. Okay, um. What I'm actually gonna do is, uh, I'm gonna mix some extra shotgun shells to equal. Actually, my DA is the same as before, the same as what I would expect. Oh, we good. What the hell? Why are they licking me? Okay. Oh, that's. No! What am I. Okay, this is very good. Uh, the liquors climbing up the ceiling is very good because that means when you flash them. When you flash them, they'll fall down from the ceiling or or a wall if they're grabbed, if they're onto a wall and take much longer to recover, which makes at least this part very free. And also, you saw that critical mistake. Uh, well, don't go, come come close to the trophy because you don't want to grab it. The game will make you grab it if you're like too close to it and you're who left the you're actually spamming mouse one to throw a flash, not try to grab an item, but because you're close, the game will think. Oh, he's trying to grab the trophy and try to give you the trophy. Ah, uh, stay away from it. You shoot around here. We're doing here. If you throw it, attacks and miss. And that was very good. Now, lab lickers are nowhere near as consistent as this, so beware. 
Now you want to equip the shotgun when you're climbing up here because uh, the ivies can be really close to you and totally ruin your day. Not this time. If an ivy is over there in your way, take this path. Then only. Oh my god, that's impossible! Okay, because I'm doing this auto save loads, uh, the liquors are being put in weird positions that I do not expect. Okay, I guess uh, we get to demonstrate live liquors one more time. The only that Ivy doesn't have enough time to actually grab you. Getting grabbed by an IV usually means rip run, unless you specifically have extra flashes or knives or grenades to use as defensive items. Oh wait, what am I doing? Don't flash those. You don't need to actually kill them, even getting a, a shot on them usually makes someone fall down, which is fine. What? That's like, makes no sense. Come on, man. Okay, that's really bad. Not only did one of the liquors not find the upper wall, I flashed a little bit earlier, which means the liquors have more time to recover and go after me. But that green nerf is a lifesaver. You have the inventory slots for it, so why not pick it up? Welcome back, Dr. Lee. You have five new messages. Ugh. Who left the freezer? Okay, check the ground around here. Okay, this liquor. Okay, he threw it out and didn't throw it out and attack, so he was actually able to chase me more efficiently. Oh well, that's what the green herb is for. Okay, this time this IV is in the way. So, what the hell? He tanked. I had to shoot him twice, god damn it. Yeah, these autosave loads are moving the IVs around in ways that I don't like it, but... Generally, only one IV is in your way. You can either shoot him or try to take a... I think the other path around... If he's in that position, you gotta shoot him. If he's in... If he's in the position where he's like... Over there, you can run up that way, which I did last time. And uh, this part you want to do as fast as possible before the IVs wake up because they can wake up. But generally, in standard, if you do do them relatively fast, they should have no chance of grabbing you. Now this this IV is in a really bad position, so get away. Okay, now I'm a little down on shotgun ammo, which I shouldn't be. You should have like a uh, four here or five. Oh no, you're supposed to have five here. So like two used on lab zombies, one for the IV. No, 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 what am I saying? It's four. Just, if you get good RNG and you don't have to shoot uh, an IV in the uh, room, uh, you'll have five left. If, uh, if you uh, did have to shoot, you'll have four left, but uh, you can do uh, four left's fine as well. Now, uh, this is OSS. 
Okay, so the solution for this is EAS. What you can do is press all three buttons at the same time. It's really neat. Okay, I used the green arrow, but it didn't heal me up fully. Oh, come on. Alright, I'm gonna pick this up. Because uh, I need to make more shotgun shells and have my DA equalized. The DA is the dynamic difficulty adjustment of the game. It's a little bit low than it would be on a real run. Okay, I'm gonna over here. You wouldn't go over here in a real run. And I'm gonna make some more shotgun ammo. That's fine. Wait, come on, that's not necessarily okay. 73 on that's a little bit too low still. Gotta pick this up. Okay, 75, yeah, 75 on is right. Get rid of these. Okay. okay, so uh there's two strats for the fight. There's the one with the flash and one without the flash. The one with the flash is much easier and I'm gonna demonstrate that first. So, uh, for the one with the flash, you'll have five or four ammo, a shotgun ammo here. You'll have one flash, three grenades, and three fold knives. Okay, so what you wanna, how, what you wanna do for the fight is just start off with the shotgun, have drop him down, knife him, and then finish off with the grenades. Okay, and throw the grenades and then flash him and then finish off with the knives. I'm gonna demonstrate now. One, two, three. Four, he drops. Knife, one slash. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, as soon as the knife's uh, finished, you wanna equip a different one, and then as when you. Okay, uh, there's a way to skip the knife equip equipping animation, it's called the knife animation cancel, I guess. How you can do it is you equip a different knife. There's two ways to do it. So you equip a different knife and then you can equip a different gun. For some reason, equipping, diff equipping a different knife and then unequipping a gun, which is accomplished by equipping a different gun, causes you to skip the knife animation. So when I exit the inventory, Leon's gonna be knifing without equipping, uh, doing an equip animation but with a different knife. Very neat. Okay, that's enough. Throw the grenades. Throw three grenades. Throw the flash in a way that doesn't flash yourself. Get closer, knife this leg. And then finish off with the knife. Oh wait. Okay, that was a very good fight. Okay, let's do it one more time. Okay, uh, the other way of a knife switching is like this. Okay, so let's say you're swiping with a knife. When you start a swipe, okay, so Leon started the swipe. He's really early in, the, in another swipe. You would do it when this knife's close to dying. You would equip a different gun. And then as soon as you exit, you're going to equip a gun that you don't have equipped. So I have the shotgun equipped. When I e exit the inventory, I'm going to press number two, which is the hotkey for the pistol. And then I'm gonna press space so he keeps knifing, and then I'm gonna press mass one so he keeps knifing. Okay, I'm gonna start up. Okay, so I'm knifing, start a knife slash, equip with knife. Two. So I switch the knife without. I switch the knife without doing a knife animation switch, which is very beneficial because it saves, gets us like an extra slash. So knife start, equip with different gun. Oh, this time it's a different gun that I, oh, I don't want to equip, which is the shotgun. Now this is very hard. The easier way to do this well, that, uh, is to so knifing, start a knife slash, equip the other gun. Wait, no, I'm wrong. Okay. Start a knife slash, equip at the different knife, then equip the different gun, and then just keep knifing. Very simple. The other one is faster because you don't have to do extra menuing. So if you just equip the different uh, knife and then go back here and do this. This kind of takes a while to master, but it's relatively straightforward. 
All right, let's do do it again. One, two, three. Good. And generally, you want to use one full knife, knifing his back like this. Then, when you switch to a different knife, you want to switch to knifing uh, his chest ties with the rest of his body. Uh, that extracts the most damage because. Okay, I actually messed that up. Not good. Okay, whatever. So how the fight works is uh, you uh, pop the eyes. He's gonna go into the stun animation, and you want you want a knife. Uh, his back along with his two uh, shoulders why we want to do that is when you uh, damage his chest dies in any way he gets up in a relatively short amount of time whereas if you're damaging other parts of his body he stays on the ground for the maximum duration but when you damage his chest dies he gets up in like around like six slash amount of time whereas the entire time he's down I believe is around 17 slashes so like after one full knife which is 10 slashes you will you switch over to the ch chest ties to get a little bit of extra damage and while still abusing his uh, stun time as for as long as possible. Now I'm gonna do the first strat one more time. One, two, three, four. Keep knife again. Don't touch the chest ties. Keep backing up. As soon as the knife breaks, transition over to the chest ties, okay, that was actually not very good. Okay, one thing out, that I'm actually doing wrong, I'm doing that wrong. I'm doing it greedy, let's say. Okay, yeah, that's why I did it greedy. I'm knifing too much before I start to run the grenades, I, you don't want to do that, because... Okay, I'll, sh I'll show, show it again. One, two, three, four. Now, when you're knifing, you can press the uh, uh, weapon hotkeys to see your knife durability. Okay, still, still transition, whatever. Now, as soon as he actually gets up, you wanna start throwing the grenades because you actually don't have any time to spare. When he's doing that roar, you want to have all your grenades thrown out, and then uh, when his eyes grow again, you, that's one you want to flash the pump. You want to time that perfectly, because otherwise, if you he can do an attack that can hit you, he can jump on you, or if you're really late, a grenade can pop one of the eyes, in which case you'll have, you'll have no opportunity to flash him, and the fight will not work. Now that you've flashed him, you want to pop his eye, leg eye with a good knife and you just want to finish him off until he dies. Look at my frame rate's dropping which is kind of... Okay. My frame rate dropped which is why I couldn't get the kill. But I'm doing it that way in a way, you know, just to make it a little bit harder to illustrate how much extra time you have. Oh, I keep doing the slow turn around. Okay, great throws started still started late, but it should be fine. Okay, even though my game lagged a lot, uh, it should be fine. Um, on a run, you should be dropping down your image quality to hold it on consistent 120. 
and do the fight as fast as possible. Okay, now for the other strat. The other strat is a little bit more complicated. So, what you do is you start with the grenades and you never use flash. Use the flash. So in that case, you will use the flash to flash the stair zombies that you shot. So in that case, you'll have eight shotgun shells, and we need them. We need the eight shotgun shells. I'm probably gonna fail this because this this method of the fight is much harder. So start with the grenades. Throw two grenades first, then use the third grenades. Stagger animation to abuse. Yeah, like it's really hard, but if you get it right, it is faster. Uh, the problem with the fight is grenades can pop eyes, which can mess up the fight real bad. If you could, if all three grenades get off without popping any eyes, it's actually really easy. But when grenades pop eyes, you have to improvise, and that's when the, the trouble comes in. Okay, yeah, the shoulder I pump, it's not good. And you want to get like all the shotgun shots on on his body to get extra damage. Damn, I missed. Uh, I missed the nice developer. Okay, so you can see how this is really tight. I barely killed him. You want all shotguns on his body, so because you need the damage from them, uh, and you want all the grenades. But you... the reason why this fight's faster is because the grenades hit at 70. Okay, your DA is 7 right now. During the fight, your DA crosses over to 8, and your grenades deal less damage because of it. If you use the grenades early, they deal more damage. Like around 1% more each, which is very, very significant. And you don't have to waste time throwing a flash and knifing at his leg uh, and his body with angles that are kind of bad. Okay, so let's do it again. One. Two. Damn it. Okay, I shot almost six times. Okay, uh, this fight's really tight. I need an actual 120 FPS to even have a shot at doing it. Doing it. That's based on how the fight goes. You have to like improvise depending on what's happening during the fight. Depending on what uh, if the grenades are pop an eye or not. So basically you want to get all three grenades on, on him and then like at least Yeah, generally you want all eight shotgun shots. But can be like it can be like six and it should still be fine, but you don't need any shotgun shells for the rest of the run. So Okay, so what you do not uh, is that Leon does not run any slower in caution. So right now it doesn't matter that I'm in caution. His stairs get slightly slower, so... And also, the reason why not picking up the barrel knife is the reason why we do that fight. is because, uh... Look at how much HP we have left over from the knife. If we did not pick up the barrel knife... And we kept... Uh, the knife that was left over from G2, that knife had like 550 HP, this one has 689 right now, so about 320 HP was used, so that's still enough knives to finish him off. So we can skip that knife and save time. But with the other strat, which uses more knifing, 
Uh, the nice left over from G2 is not enough to kill, uh, kill G3. Which is why, uh, if you skip the barrel knife, the grenade starting strat is the only one that's viable. Uh, but the flash one, flash strat is viable for, for both options. Wait, no. Yeah, no, the grenade starting strat is viable for if it, whether or not you have full knives or not, obviously, because it uses less knives. But the, the flash strat uses more knives, and if you don't have enough knives, it's not gonna work. But I still recommend the flash strat. That knife will pick up. Ah, okay. Depending on how much knife you have left over, you can actually skip picking this up. Picking that up, this up is a bad idea. Like you can have like one knife that has like one third HP and still finish off a super time. But picking up that knife was just a waste of time. Okay, what I did was okay. What you want to do is uh, as soon as like as soon as it triggered the elevator, you want to shoot behind that ivy, the wall. That'll cause the ivy to turn around. Hopefully you'll be able to run past. Barely! We barely did it. Now this one, we have to shoot the bolt because there's actually no way to stick past them. We tried. We tried everything, man. Now here, Mr. X is going to block your way like the first time he lifted the hel helicopter. So we're going to do the uh, lunge by aiming at him. We're going to make him lunge by aiming at him. to the end yay okay now this last plug is displacing it on which is not ideal but whatever okay, put this in now okay so how you knife him is uh, really simple you just want him to be on leon's left side and that should connect the knife slashes very effectively one two okay so when he staggers you want to stop knifing if you want to preserve knife durability like maybe you have like really low knives uh, basically, you want to stagger him three times, and that will make the rocket launcher drop as fast as possible. So, like, after you stagger him, wait for him to recover, and then knife him again. Then, uh, repeat. Like that. Recover. Like again. That's the three staggers, and that's that's the fight. At least in terms of speed, I can, I'm, I can demonstrate it again. That's a bad stagger animation. Oh, okay, that was bad. That was bad knife slashes. Okay, if you got the first stagger, which is consistent, actually getting hit on doesn't lose that much time. Like, or like, it, like it might take five seconds stumbling around, recovering, and then staggering him again. But the rocket launcher to drop is delayed not by not that much. So let's see. So you want to position yourself like on his left arm, not behind him. If he's if you're directly behind him, he's gonna do a different attack and he can hit you. You want to hug his left arm, in which case he'll cycle between a double slash attack or a quick slash attack, quick wide slash attack. The quick white slash attack is kind of hard to dodge. But it, you, you just gotta practice this fight. Uh, to you get the get down. So. He, uh, you can do this if you never stop knifing, which is a lot easier. Okay, now. That's the long uh, white slash attack. That's the double slash. You just keep hugging his left arm and just dance around him. The quick slash, you want to just move around him a little bit when he starts the attack to dodge it. The double slash is really easy. He's doing his wind up, just run away, and after he's done, just run back to his left arm. Uh, this is the most effective way to dodge him. Other ways they exist, and, but they're kind of easy to mess up. This one's super simple. Oh. 
Uh, the rocks that drop, they're, they're not, they're not gonna hit you. Now uh, he can, oh, that is not what I wanted to show. If he's, okay, if he's close to a rock, he can choose to hit that rock. And if you Okay, I just don't want to show that off. If... If a rock is in his way, and he can hit the rock. And that'll hit you and actually can kill you or damage you. If it looks like he's gonna hit a rock, you want to stay as far away as possible. Self-destruct sequence initiated. Use the center but in general, you just want him to stay away from rocks in the first place, so... On the other hand... On the other hand... You can bait him towards rocks and make him hit them uh, to buy yourself a little bit of time if you're not uncomfortable... If you're uncomfortable with this pattern of dodges. Like, for example, I can do this. Now he should, yeah, like, nah, yeah, I'm not good with this. I, I just do the other strat. Yeah, like, uh, if you're too far away, I guess he does the jump lunge. Sometimes he does it as well, but it's like easy to dodge. Because like, you're already like behind him by when he's doing the double slash anyway. You like cycle between the two attacks, like no exceptions. Always it's the one after the other. Okay, this rocket launcher pickup. You wanna hold up right. It, it works even on danger. You wanna hold up right. And then hold up, pick it up, move back, and then shoot the shotgun. And that's it. Now these zombies only spawn after the things docked, but you can sh make sure you shoot at the floor. Shooting at the zombies sometimes the rocket can rocket can find grabs uh, in through them uh, and not get them. Or you can shoot at the wall on the door. You, you, you can even shoot at the door as soon as they'll get off the platform and it'll kill the zombies. But people have messed it up before. And that is how you do Leon A. Hopefully I've covered everything I needed to cover. If you have any questions, feel free to comment or you can contact me directly on Discord. I'll have my Discord information in the description. And uh, I hope you have fun running this game, because I sure do. Okay, thanks for so watching everybody. And if you would like to support support me, make sure you make sure to follow my Twitch channel, where I do speedruns uh, there very often. Okay, thanks for watching.